Live, local, late breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, I'm Corey McGinnis. And I'm Aaron Rogers. A medical assistant for the Morehouse School of Medicine Family Health Clinic has been arrested. Erica Wiggins is charged with forging doctor's signatures on prescriptions. Police say most of the drugs Erica Wiggins prescribed were very strong painkillers. Now it is unclear whether or not the prescriptions were for herself or for others. We were there as Wiggins was being arrested and she had very little to say. Ma'am, did you have any connection with illegal prescriptions? Excuse me? Do you know what they're arresting you for? No. Now Wiggins is scheduled to be in court tomorrow morning at 11. We are following a developing story. An accident involving a motorcycle has caused police to shut down Powder Spring Street in Cobb County. Here's a look from News Chopper 2. A car collided with the motorcycle head on. The driver of the motorcycle has been flown to the hospital by paramedics. We will keep you updated with the latest information as it becomes available. Police are investigating the possible disappearance of a 13-year-old girl. Kiara Hodges was last seen on Monday night around 10 p.m. wearing an orange tank top, blue jean shorts, and flip-flops. Police say they believe Hodges may be a runaway, but her family is not convinced. If you have any information about Hodges' disappearance, please contact the Fulton County Police Department. And it's another hot and muggy day out there. Tyler Malden is going to tell us what we can expect, if we can expect any relief anytime soon. Tyler. Yeah, and it's about to get toasty out there again due to a massive heat wave creeping into Georgia over the next few days. But currently, speaking of toasty, hot Atlanta is getting pretty toasty indeed. 90 degrees right now, humidity 100%, winds 20 miles per hour. That heat wave that I was just referring to due in part to this high pressure system sitting over North Carolina. With this clockwise motion, it's clipping the Gulf, bringing that warm, moist tropical air up, and the two are acting together and creating such a heat wave like a heat dome making our lives miserable for the next few days. So if you got any plans, well, they're going to be pretty muggy, so make sure you have plenty of water. I'll talk more about it here in just a few minutes. We're now on day 76 of the oil spill. Channel 2's Alyssa Hyman has more on how the spill is affecting what you might order next time you go to your favorite seafood restaurant. Alyssa. Before it was our vacation spots, now it's the food we eat. The oil spill is not just affecting the Gulf area. I talked with some people in the seafood industry here in Georgia to see how the Gulf disaster is affecting them. I'm sorry, no shrimp. This was just one of many phone calls to Bushel Seafood and Wings where owner Darcy McGinnis dished out bad news to customers. We have been out of shrimp for a week now. Um, we've been placing orders for the past two weeks and none. Because she can't get the preferred Gulf white shrimp, McGinnis says she's losing customers and sales are down about 50 percent. It's been so bad. Like yesterday, we had about 20 customers throughout the day. We've been keeping a little tally of how many people have walked in and out because of you no know, shrimp. And yesterday it was like 20 people. However, small restaurant owners aren't the only ones hurting from the Gulf disaster. Even big businesses like Inland Seafood feel the pain too. Our business is hurt by it, it's impacted. People are having to look at other things. One of the biggest problems Inland Seafood faces is the little amount of product available. It's because fishermen aren't fishing. Uh, those fishermen uh, are getting paid from BP $5,000 a month to sit on shore not fish as a preliminary damage settlement from what we've heard. The other problem is people just aren't buying Gulf products, fearing it's contaminated. We've closed any area that may be affected. But the one thing you've got to remember about big fish that you eat, like snapper, grouper, tuna, wahoo, swordfish, they're smart enough not to go in any areas where oil is. Now, one thing everyone did emphasize was that the seafood in commerce is 100% safe to eat. It's just, it may be at a much higher price. Now, for more details on the oil spill, BP is estimating the total cost of the spill, which has reached about $3.12 billion. This figure does not include the $20 billion fund that BP is paying for damages. Storms in the Gulf are making offshore work dangerous and ineffective. You can go to WSBTV.com for complete coverage on the Gulf oil spill. Just click on the oil spill tab on the home page. You'll be able to access a live feed of the underwater leak 
and an interactive map tracking the spill's path. An initiative is underway to have a pledge named in honor of a four-year-old boy who was murdered earlier this year. Tribute in honor of my son, even though this cannot bring him back, but it will help others. A stray bullet hit Markel Hodge on New Year's Eve. Police believe someone enjoying the celebration shot the bullet. Police pledge organizers hope their actions will stop something like this from happening again. By participating, you are pledging that you will no longer shoot your guns in celebration of a holiday. Several businesses have already signed the pledge, stating that they will not sell bullets prior to the 4th of July. A Lithonia family enraged over a late night lineup their son was wrongly made a part of. High school football player Quentin Boswell has never been in trouble until he was accused of robbery last week. I go downstairs and I see about five or six police cars in the driveway or in the street and it's about two police officers at the door waiting for me. Quentin's mother shows us how police banged on her door at 4 a.m. She says she brought her son downstairs to clear his name but was upset at what happened next. She snatches him out of my hands. She's handling him like he's a criminal. But Boswell and his family had been asleep all night. Authorities did arrest another suspect when Boswell was ruled out. The victim said that this is not the child. This is not the person who broke in my house. But one officer's antics did not end there. She drove away and she came back and she use profanity. And the family wants to make sure others are not subjected to such treatment. I would like that for this not to happen to any other parent. I would like some awareness. But it's an experience this high school senior will never forget. You're supposed to be able to trust police and be protected by police, but I don't feel that way no more. I contacted the DeKalb County Police Department. They told me a complaint was filed and they are looking into it. The family is still waiting for an apology. New developments on MARTA's budget cuts. We first told you about these cuts seven months ago. Now the Transit Authority says they will be making significant changes to their services. These changes include a reduction in 10% of bus services and 14% of rail services. Also, over 300 workers will be receiving pink slips. These changes are going into effect immediately. A tip leads us to a county worker who has been sleeping on the job for weeks. Channel 2's Vicki Gale has the story. Vicki. What, what are you doing out here? No, hanging out. A viewer email tipped us off about a DeKalb County employee who has been sleeping on the job. When we went to investigate, we found this. Gary James, a DeKalb County employee, asleep in a clearly marked county truck, parked in the back of this parking lot just before 11 o'clock a.m. DeKalb County officials confirmed James's shift is from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. We've learned that James was hired in 2005 as an environmental inspector on sites under construction. While this may seem like a harmless snap, people outside the Georgia Department of Labor were upset by what they saw. I am a single mom and he's getting paid for sleeping in the car. That's, that's nice. Uh, there's a lot of people that need jobs and I'm one of them. That's my taxpayer money going to waste. What about Throw you, him out. Throw him out. Yeah, oh yeah. If that's the best thing to do, I'd say don't chunk him, child. DeKalb County officials continue to investigate the case to see if James has slept on the job before. Now officials do confirm that Gary James has been suspended for five days without pay. A Cobb County transit bus crashes. We'll tell you how one passenger took matters into her own hands. A man is out on bond after deputies arrested him for pretending to be a dentist. I'm Mackenzie Patterson, live in the newsroom, where he was running his practice and sending the lab work. Next. And a deadly car crash kills one teen and injures another. What police think the teens were doing that caused the crash? Next.